Ladies and gentlemen, my name is Paul. Hopefully having an amazing day. Just yesterday, NVIDIA started to plaster on their social media Beyond GeForce, a tease for the next generation of GeForce cards, RTX 40, which of course is powered by the NVIDIA Lovelace architecture. It's not too surprising then that there are a plethora of leaks now online for these next generation of products. And perhaps today's is one of the more exciting leaks. We actually have a time spy score. We have clock frequency information, temperature, a bunch of stuff regarding the specifications, TDP, and well, a lot of other stuff. Plus, we're going to be covering some other cool stories as well. Naturally, we're going to get right into it after this message from the video's sponsor. If you're running a copy of Windows 10, which isn't activated, of course, not only do you have to worry about the missing customization options, but there's also that annoying Windows desktop watermark reminding you to activate. Today's video is sponsored by whokeys.com, and they have an excellent price on Windows 10 Professional as well as Home Keys. Yeah, and they also, of course, sell games. I've bought a few Windows 10 keys with my own personal account to test everything was legit and worked in preparation for this sponsored video. You can pick up one of their keys for 25% off using the coupon code RGT in the checkout. There's links to their website in the video description. Also, if you're building a few systems, there's bundles available too. Again, you can check out whokeys.com and use the coupon code RGT for 25% off the listed Windows 10 key prices. So for those who did miss yesterday's video, although I will of course link it in the description uh, down below, NVIDIA have now started to tease the Beyond GeForce event. Now, there's not exactly a whole load of information that NVIDIA are releasing at this time, just that, well, it's going to be geforce related uh you know technically speaking from the marketing it could be almost anything to do with geforce including like you know an rtx 3075 or something like that but of course in reality we know it is for the next generation of cards and they should release at some point mid next month but there have been a ton of leaks concerning the performance and specifications for the next generation cards. And we actually covered yesterday uh, several benchmarks which had also appeared for an unknown RTX 40 card. Basically speaking, it was around 1.8 to 2. Point, let's say 1 or 2 faster than, again, an unknown RTX 30 card. Most likely, it was an RTX 4090. And today, we actually have some very solid information concerning the performance. I'm going to get into the Time Spy score first. This is the GPU score. Uh, bottom line is we are looking at 20,192. Now this does seem to be an engineering sample card and the drivers are not exactly final. Furthermore, the CPU being used here is just a 12400F, which does hurt the overall score, and of course the CPU score in particular, but mostly the GPU results shouldn't be too affected. Furthermore, looking at the screenshot, a couple of very intriguing things can be seen. The first of which is that the GPU actually does hit over 3000 megahertz, which is pretty damn snazzy. I mean, that is very fast, especially once again, considering the fact this is almost certainly not a final production piece of silicon. Also, the GPU was being tested and hitting around 65 degrees. Now, unfortunately, we cannot see the card's cooler in these photos, but they did state it was an air cooler and quote, it is huge, designed to perhaps dissipate up to six to 800 watts, but the TDP of this particular card is just 450. Now, I want to just quickly diverge from the story for a second and mention that, of course, early reports were that the RTX 4090 could go up to 600 watts, but then, of course, we learned that it was just 450. I'm still hearing that custom AIB variants can be much higher, so perhaps that's based on this, or perhaps the 600 watt story is just completely bogus. Honestly, I don't know, but what I will say one of my sources is still very adamant that NVIDIA may release a 600 watt version of this 1490, and I think Kopitai 7 Kimi also mentioned it. I can't remember if it's Kopitai 7 or Grayman. One of the two also mentioned it. I'm unsure, to be honest, what the story is there, but bottom line is that NVIDIA have a ton of headroom here because if these temperatures are accurate running, um, you know, the 3D Mark benchmark, 
that's actually pretty cool, uh, literally speaking as well. Like the temperatures are not too bad, you know, then certainly not hitting as high as perhaps many had predicted. Now this score, and you can see a nice comparison here, um, is essentially about 80% faster than an RTX 3090 Ti and about twice that of an RTX 3090. Now I say about twice because ultimately this will depend on several factors, one of which, of course, the most obvious one is, is it a custom card? Have you got it overclocked? And so on and so on. But ultimately speaking, we are looking at a significant improvement in performance. I will also add that I think uh, ray tracing performance is probably going to be even higher. But again, it's very hard to know for a fact because ultimately we are basing a lot of this stuff on rumors and conjecture. There have also been a couple of supposed leaked prices online, and this is from basically early entries onto various retailers. Basically speaking, these prices are really high. They are much higher than an RTX 3090's MSRP. You can see the prices you're seeing, oh, sorry, yourself on the screen. I don't know how accurate they are, honestly. Like, Retailers can sometimes just put things as placeholders or maybe these are the actual prices sometimes. Uh, we've had a history basically where prices can be literally within a couple of dollars um, versus the MSRP of retail versus, or it could be completely and utterly off and we could be looking at a price which is like twice that of retail. For what it's worth, I was told that it's going to be a little more than the MSRP of the RTX 3090 but this was quite some time ago so God knows what's happening with these particular cards and of course it's also going to depend on things like which variant of the card like obviously if you're going with like the flagship variants from like MSI or Asus or whomever obviously they're going to be more expensive so I don't really think you should take this pricing information with any degree of certainty it's pretty interesting that we're starting to see retailers now list these things but I would just say hmm that's interesting and any official as like any pricing can literally change like a day before the event so i wouldn't really put too much faith in it right now because pricing is like almost the last thing to be decided quite frequently another thing which is pretty interesting here is it also seems to indicate the memory clock frequency as well again there's not a huge amount to really mention about this it seems to essentially fit within the specifications which had been leaked previously and ultimately speaking we are looking at a card which quite honestly is just going to be absolutely nuts i still don't really know what's going to be faster between rdna 3 and rtx 40 i suspect it's going to be a <sighs> My guess is that it's going to be a lot of driver-side optimization for both GPUs, or sorry, both GPU architectures when they're released. And I suspect that there's going to be a lot of tweaking and trying to squeeze every last drop of performance. Because don't forget, if you have, an, uh, let's say a card, let's say you have card A and B, just make it really simple, and you have like a whole bunch of graphs, you know, different games, what people tend to do, they don't even generally look at the frame rate difference. They just look at what card's on top, especially if you're just skim reading. So, for example, let's say the RTX 4090, let's call that card A in the in RDNA 3 card, card B. Let's say card A got like 100 frames a second and RDNA 3 got like 99. <laughs> it's not exactly a big gap, but yeah, that's obviously the card that everyone's just going to say is winning especially if it's you know scoring that across more games than uh, amd so it's going to be i think a lot of optimization on both on both fronts it's going to be very interesting to see how this next generation uh, ends up i'm going to be particularly intrigued in the mid-range um i think the high end is going to be really cool but i think the mid-range for next generation cards is unfortunately going to take a while to really percolate given the release dates are almost certainly going to be starting from kind of q1 next year now i want to just quickly discuss zen 4 specifically the 7600x there is some rather interesting performance numbers that uh, videocars.com have posted basically this is with performance boost disabled and there is actually quite a tangible difference here with cinebench uh, r23 you can see on screen yourself the results uh, basically speaking, in multi-core tests, the same CPU 
scores 13,000 and 14,767. So that's about a 13.5% difference. Meanwhile, there's just over a 14% difference in single thread because this 7600X scores 1681 in single core and it goes up to 1920 with CBP enabled. And again, you can see a nice comparison of all of the different benchmarks of the 7600X versus other uh, Zen 4 processors. There's an awful lot of tech which is going to be releasing, of course, from AMD, NVIDIA, as well as Intel over the next several months. It's going to be an interesting one because it's not just new platforms and graphics cards, but arguably speaking, we're going to be seeing a lot of very interesting changes to the ecosystems as well. Um, I think the mid-range for me is perhaps just as exciting uh, normally i'm a massive whore when it comes to the the, the high-end stuff but i think the mid-range is perhaps even e more intriguing in some ways not because you know the mid-range stuff isn't super exciting but i do think that the next generation of cards from both amd and nvidia have a real have a real shot at being able to bring like 4k gaming maybe with some concessions and settings anyway to to a degree in your way, the mainstream, I suppose it really, you know, what, what do you guys consider mainstream in terms of pricing now? Because prices have just been so, let's just say screwed, uh, across the market. So what do you consider like a mainstream price for a GPU? Uh, some would argue like a, an RTX 3060 is mainstream or like a 16 series card. And others would say something more like an RTX 3070. Let me know your thoughts on that. But either way, I do think a high frame rate 1440p gaming and, um, you know, entry level 4K gaming is going to be really quite viable with an awful lot of cards. And it's going to be also cool to see what happens on the CPU side of things as well. I am a little nervous to see how the pricing situation develops on AM5. Um, and I'm also going to be quite curious to see what the marketing strategies will be for both AMD and Intel for the CPUs, especially again in the mid-range, because the high end it's it's a little it's a little easier, I think, uh, because you're already kind of paying those prices. But for AMD, of course, you, you know, if you're kind of going with the the, the, the lower end stuff like the 7600, I think people are going to be like kind of like, huh, well, I also need DDR4 memory and all of that stuff. So it's going to, sorry, DDR5 memory and all of that. So it's going to be very interesting to see what people end up doing, especially given Zen 3 is also seeing some cuts at the moment. You know, we're seeing some really interesting pricing for the 5800X 3D. So I'm going to be very curious to see what uh, ends up being like the best bang for buck systems. With that said though, thank you very much for watching the video. If you've enjoyed it, it's YouTube, you know what to do. Leave a like on the video and do let me know down below what you consider like a mid-range graphics card at the moment. And also let me know are you considering upgrading to these next generation of cards? And if so, what kind of performance tier are you excited, you know, to kind of put your hands on? Is it like the high-end stuff? Are you more excited than the mid-range? Are you just at this point waiting to see what AMD are also doing? Obviously, at the end of the day, we've heard a ton of rumors for RDNA 3. But again, at this point, we haven't actually seen any solid benchmarks. I suspect November is going to be very interesting um situation and my guess is and i'm not basing this off of leaks but my guess is that there are going to be a crap ton of announcements from amd and um nvidia around the november period because i suspect that nvidia are going to make some pretty bold moves to try to counter amd's rdna free architecture no matter what the performance level is so yeah it's going to be interesting with that said take care of yourselves have an amazing day bye for now